You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. Do you need a car? Been shopping only to be turned down because of bad credit, low credit, no credit, bankruptcy, or divorce? Guess what? Today's your lucky day. Because now you can buy a car, truck, or SUV, just about any vehicle. It's true. Bad credit doesn't matter. No credit doesn't matter. Bankruptcy or divorce, it just doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, your job is your ticket to your new vehicle. We're Auto Credit Express, and we've helped thousands of people just like you. Antonio H. told us, great company, got me connected, and the day I went in, I drove off in the car I wanted. 100% worth your time. Need a car? Get started now and drive off as early as today. Just text FINANCE, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, to 357-911 right now to get started. That's FINANCE, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, to 357-911. Auto financing the easy way. Text FINANCE to 357-911. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. It's time now for the conservative curmudgeon radio show. Now, here's Grouchy. Welcome in. Glad to have you back on Wednesday night. Before we get rolling, programming reminder update. Following me immediately tonight, Fubar with Polita Bunny and Ordy Packard, the guy that makes the fart noises. Uh, then after that, you get um, you get you get Dan and Rick. And and Rick, what do you guys call this show? Finally, Robinson and Wright. Robinson and Wright. I just wanted to make sure we weren't changing the name as well as the time <laughs> and no. the night and all that good stuff. So, okay. So Robinson and Wright with Rick and Dan. And then after that, America off the rails with Rowdy Rick. So we are back. I know I used to say this a long time ago, but we are back to the grand slam of conservative talk on Wednesday night on KLRN radio. Do yourself a favor. You're going to want to be here all night. Wednesday night TV sucks anyway, so just stay with us. So, uh, we got some things to talk about, um, but we got some things to talk about before we talk about our things. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's just been one of those things. What a week we've had already. It's just Wednesday. Um, you know, we, we have to touch on this, uh, this college entrance bribe scam uh, whatever you want to call it, that's implicated so many CEOs and the, the couple of actresses. And, uh, you know, this investigation is not over yet, folks. It is not over yet. There could be some more uh, really well-known names that are implicated in this. But, um, you know, let's, you know, never mind. I know it was fun, the, the trend of Aunt Becky and, and, you know, the Felicity Huffman and William H. Macy thing. It, it's, all, it's all good fun, but let's get down to the issue. Okay, so what the FBI has said is that it's going to be up to the schools how they want to deal with the students. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about what's supposed to be um, what they called elite. I'm hey, not hey, going to hey, say elite G, because G. G, back, yo. back up for just a second, because I'm not sure if you decided to start doing your workout on this show. But for about 30 seconds, nobody could hear anything but a bunch of wind coming through your mic. Really? Yeah. I just figured anyway. you started work. I just figured you started working on your pecs or something. No, no, I was actually just talking, and uh, I heard nothing here, so you sure it's not the wind there? Uh, <laughs> all I know for sure is nobody heard anything on my side because your meter wasn't moving. Okay, well, so we're going to back up. We're going to talk about the uh, the college admission scam bribery thing going on. Um, I know it's all fun to talk about the hashtags, the Aunt Becky and the Felicity Huffman and William H. Macy side of it, but, you know, they're... They're probably some more of the popular names, but they're certainly not the wealthiest of names. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, Fortune 500 CEOs that are involved in this. P 
people that have real money, um, not the ones that are dumb enough to spend $400,000 to get their kids into USC just so they can turn around and pay full tuition for them. Uh, you know, USC will take a 25 on the ACT, which is um, literally a score I can achieve um, blitzed out of my mind. Uh, you know, you could get me drunk and I could sit down and score a 25. But, um, hey, you know, here nor there, um, these people did it. They they have crimes to pay for. Now, whether there will actually be real jail time of this, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think I'm thinking with the vast number of people that are still involved and this investigation is still ongoing. According to the FBI, it is not over with. Uh, they did say more people would be uh, indicted as well. So we don't know who that's going to be just yet. Um, I'm, like I said, you know, it's going to be fun to watch it all fall out and, and see what happens. But uh, I'm thinking that jail time would probably be minimal at best. I'm thinking some some seriously hefty fines, um, you know, some community service type stuff. Um, I mean, let's face it, these people are wealthy. And we know what happens to super wealthy people that traipse into the legal system. They, they find their way to minimize what's been done and, uh, you know, have, have the penalties knocked down to a level that, uh, is acceptable for them, which means, uh, not going to jail basically. So let's just watch and see where all this goes. Um, you know, obviously the ringleader, the man that set up the, the fake charity that was doing actually all the bribing, uh, and, and we'll call it, well, I don't know. Should we call it extorting? I don't know if I'd call it extorting. Um, you know, I'm sure his lawyers, even though he's already pled guilt, um, will tell us that, uh, it's just him trying to provide a service. Yeah, I'm not buying that either. But, you know, like I said, all this is going to fall out somewhere. I just don't know that we're going to see a lot of heavy jail time for people like Aunt Becky and Felicity Huffman and William H. Macy. Um, but, hey, you know, stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Um, let's see. What else is going on? Uh I don't even know. We're going to talk about the budget a lot tonight. Uh, Trump's proposed budget, that is. And uh, we're going to we're going to get into it a little bit more than uh, what you've probably just been catching blurbs of on the news. And uh, I know that's it's kind of dry stuff, but, you know, it's it's stuff we need to we need to see where Trump's going with this and, and see what he's reflecting out in his budget. Now, look. I know the Democrats are already saying it's dead on arrival. It's not even going to make it in the door, um, that it's ridiculous and blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. Every president submits a budget. And I would be willing to. Whoa, that was some nasty reverb. Yeah, that was the wind on my side. Now it seems okay. to come back down. <laughs> anyway. Um, so anyway, uh, every budget that a president submits is basically a Christmas wish list. Um, I would be willing to bet, oh, I don't know, 50 bucks that nobody out there knows when the last time a president submitted a budget that went to Congress and was accepted as is occurred. So anyway, yeah, I'm just going to leave that right there and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, as we get into the budget, uh, Trump sent his proposed budget on Monday. Uh, it was a record $4.75 trillion budget plan. And it calls for increased military spending and sharp cuts to domestic programs like education and environmental protection. Now, most of the notes that I've accrued here 
I accrued from a uh, largely anti-Trump site, and I did that for a reason, because I wanted to see what people that don't like Trump are complaining about in the budget. So uh, this budget, which would be the largest in federal history, uh, includes a nearly 5% increase in military spending, uh, which is more than the Pentagon has asked for. That's one thing they're complaining about. They don't like the Pentagon being given more money than they say they need. Apparently, that's only cool for domestic programs. So, um, you know, uh, he's asking for an additional $8.6 billion in, in wall construction funds. Uh, it, it also contains what White House officials called a total of $1.9 trillion in cost savings from mandatory safety net programs like Medicaid and Medicare, uh, the federal health care programs for the elderly and poor. Now, this budget uh, is unlikely to have much effect on actual spending levels, uh, which are controlled by Congress, obviously, the House per particularly. Um, you know, the Senate has a say, but the House is the one that really has the purse strings. So, uh, again, Democratic leaders in both the House and the Senate pronounced the budget dead on arrival, uh, and Mr. Trump's budget largely failed to gain traction in previous years when fellow Republicans controlled both chambers. But the blueprint is basically a declaration of Trump's re-election campaign priorities. And basically, we're talking about this being the shot across the bow. This is the start of the skirmish in the race for 2020. So as both Republicans and Democrats try to carve out their messages to appeal to voters, the president's budget quickly antagonized Democrats while making clear the contours of how he plans to run for re-election. Uh, it is replete with aggressively optimistic uh, economic assumptions, which I, I don't know. Is it really optimistic to think that we can hold 3%? I mean, we've, we've exceeded uh, White House expectations both of the last two years in GDP. Uh, it, I mean, really, are we going to start naysaying him now that he's made his mark twice in a row? I don't know. I, I think that uh, I think he deserves the benefit of the doubt, at least on this. Um, you know, he's called it for two years and he's held up to it. So um, it's, you know, optimistic economic assumptions and it appeals to his core constituents uh, and it envisions deep cuts to programs that Democrats hold dear. Yet it projects a trillion dollar deficit for each of the next four years and does not balance the budget for 15 years. Now, I'm going to go back in time because I said this when Obama was in office when I was on the air. I don't like these plans that propose cutting or, or propose a budget and then doesn't balance out until well after they're out of office. Uh, that's, that's like wanting them to, it's like Obama did it, and I know Bush did it, and I know Clinton did it, um, and I'd even be willing to bet that Daddy Bush did it if I went back and looked close enough. I was kind of apolitical during his term because I was military. I mean, I was, you know, pro-Bush, but I was pro-military, so I didn't really get into a lot of politics back then. But anyway, um, it just, just seems odd to me that, they, that anybody thinks it's fair to propose a budget that puts us in the hole and forces somebody else to reconcile it later. And that's, you know, that was my opinion when Obama was in office. That's my opinion on this now. So I'm not a fan of that side of it. So uh, Chuck Schumer. You know, you know who Chucky is. He's the uh, Senate minority leader uh, from New York. 
Uh, he called the proposal a gut punch to the American middle class. Uh, he said, Mr. Trump's requested cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, as well as numerous other middle class programs are devastating, but not surprising. The budget would curb the growth of Medicare and Medicaid, two programs that Mr. Trump had previously pledged to leave intact. Well, okay, so curbing the growth is not dismantling, let's be fair. Uh, and it proposes shaving $818 billion from projected spending on Medicare over 10 years and cutting nearly $1.5 trillion from projected spending on Medicaid. Now, how they achieve that, I don't know. Uh, I would assume that that would be through cutting services that are available. I, I just don't know. I'd have to look into more detail to see. Uh, in place of the open-ended federal contribution to Medicaid, uh, Mr. Trump would give states market-based health care grants, lump sums of federal money or per capita allotments, totaling $1.2 trillion over 10 years. Uh, Congress rejected this idea in 2017 when Republicans proposed it because it would essentially cap Medicaid payments at a fixed level and would not keep pace with rising health care costs which is a whole nother program or a whole nother problem all by itself. The rising cost of health care. Um, you know, health care didn't used to really be um, a lucrative market. Uh, even as far back as my childhood. Um, what really tipped the scales of turning health care into um, a, a money basic, I mean, basically it's money, I don't want to call it laundering, but it's, it's become a money machine. Okay. And, and my take is that that's because this all started happening when insurance was allowed to become for profit because believe it or not, kids, uh, back just, just before I was born, insurance companies were allowed to, to stop being not for profit. They were nonprofit organizations. They were strictly there to serve their members, and that was it. That's what insurance, health insurance, was for. Now, they've turned into a profit-making endeavor. And don't get me wrong, I don't begrudge anybody making money. I really don't. But look what it's caused. So we need an alternative to it. Uh, is that alternative government-run health care? Hell no. Hell no. But we need to come up with something. Now, uh, let's see. Where were we? Where were we? Uh, Mr. Trump also proposed new work requirements for work-age adult recipients of food stamps, federal housing support, and Medicaid, a move that the administration said would reduce spending on those programs by $327 billion over a decade because it would disqualify many who currently receive assistance that don't really need it. See, that's, that's the part they left out. And this, is, this is why I go to the other side to read their sources, okay? We have, to, we have to know what they're saying in order to compare it with reality. Now, the reality is, is that there are system abuses and it does happen. I've seen it. I, I still see it uh, in the town I live in. So I know it happens. If it's happening in this little town, it's happening in every little town. And if it's happening in every little town, it's happening in every mid-sized town. And on and on and on. So don't tell me there's no abuse to the system. Now, payments to a variety of health care providers would also be cut. Okay, see, here we go. Uh, Medicare payments to hospitals for unpaid bills and uncompensated care would be reduced by $136 billion over 10 years. Uh, the proposed budget would cut projected Medicare payments to hospital outpatients by or outpatient departments by $131 billion over 10 years. Uh, in addition, the budget squeezes more than $100 billion over 10 years from Medicare payments to nursing homes 
and home health agencies that care for Medicare patients who have left the hospital. Now, the president offers a suite of proposals to lower prescription drug prices uh, with federal savings estimated at $69 billion over 10 years. The changes to the drug program uh, may have the effect of increasing premiums for Americans who rely on Medicare, but they would also, for the first time, limit the amount that seniors with very expensive drugs could be asked to pay for each year. Uh, some of the plans resemble uh, unsuccessfully offered uh, by uh, yeah, former President Obama, sadly enough. You see, this is this is where he, he goes out on the limb and tries to reach out to the left and, and they're going to reject them based on ideas that they wanted to pass three and four years ago. So uh, let's see, the Trump proposed budget uh, spending, it spends $26 billion less on Social Security programs. Uh, the federal retirement program, including a $10 billion cut to the Social Security Disability Insurance Program, which provides benefits to disabled workers. Uh, those cuts would be achieved in various ways, including more, more aggressively policing fraud in the program. Look, again, we know fraud happens, okay? We've all seen examples of it, and it's out there, and there's nothing that anybody can really do to stop it. It's there until we enforce the law, and we have to crack down on this crap. So... Uh, those cuts would not be across the board, but would come from federal agencies uh, like the EPA and, uh, you know, I mean, he, look, EPA, okay, since we touched on them, EPA, the proposed cuts to EPA is 31%, 31%. Significant reductions are also requested at other agencies responsible for the United States energy and environmental policies, including a 70% cut in renewable energy research and the elimination of climate science programs across an array of agencies. Now, people are going to flip their wigs over that. I'm telling you, they're going to. Here's the thing. We've already got so much of this going on that we have redundancies. So a lot of this is just going to end redundancies. Is it going to end every bit? That the, that the government is doing in the way of renewable energy and even climate change research. You know, if you're subscribed to believing in that. Look, even if you're not, okay, you have to look at it. You have to look at it. So, uh, uh, the requested cut from the Department of Energy is 31.7 billion, which is an 11% drop from current funding. Uh, that includes about 696 million for the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, which provides hundreds of millions of dollars in grants each year for research into electric vehicles, battery storage, and building efficiency. Okay, again, what I touched on, there's so much of this happening in the private sector already. Uh, it's going to happen. We don't need the gut. We don't need to be paying for it, you and I. Okay? We pay for it when we buy the vehicles. You know, these companies, they want to expand the technology. Well, invest. Invest in it. Don't ask us to invest in it. That's what these subsidies are. Okay, so uh, the Interior Department is targeted for a 14% decrease, dropping its overall budget to $12.5 billion. And now look, Congress, they're not going to accept most of these changes. They underscore, you know, Trump's commitment to unraveling Obama-era environmental regulations, uh, particularly those addressing climate change and prioritizing the development of fossil fuel resources. Uh, at the EPA, the administration aims to cut $66 million. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, cutting voluntary climate change related partnerships known as uh, Atmospheric Protection Program that, among other things, 
helps businesses and local governments track planet warming greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it also zeroes out 19 million that had been devoted to scientific research on climate change uh, under a line item called prioritize robust science. The agency proposes a cut of $263 million from $481 million. Now, for the third year in a row, Mr. Trump's budget would also cut funding for the education department, this time by 10%. Congress has repeatedly rejected efforts to reduce the department's spending. Lawmakers instead increased funding for the department last year, but an education department official said this year's request reflected the desire to have some fiscal discipline and address some higher priority needs. So again, we've got a department that's asking for less money that Congress is foisting more money upon, uh, kind of like the president is doing with the Pentagon. Why can't we just balance this stuff all out? So this budget speaks uh, or seeks to cut more than two dozen programs, including a popular after school program for many low income students. It would eliminate higher education programs. Uh, like the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program and subsidized federal Stafford loans and reduce work study uh, funding as officials tweak the program to offer more career oriented jobs for low income students. So it's it's give and take. It's give and take. And uh, apparently Congress is concerned that he's taking more than he's giving. So that's why they're screaming dead on arrival. All right, look, we got a little more to look into with this, but we got to take a break here. We're at the bottom of the hour. So uh, go get your drinks refilled and uh, get right back in here. We're going to be at it in about three minutes again when Rick hits the button. was in the army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
dollars, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Speaking of pro Bush, just saying. All right, welcome back. We're going to wind it down for the second half here. Well, actually, a little less than a half. I, I ran a couple minutes long there on the first side, but anyway. Um, so, programming reminder coming up next: Fubar with Polita Bunny and Ordy Packard. Followed by uh, Robinson and Wright with Dan Rick, and then Rowdy Rick with America Off the Rails. Your Grand Slam is back in play. So anyway, uh, where we left off, the budget uh, also requests seven hundred million for school safety initiatives being coordinated by several agencies, including two hundred million for the education department. Uh, The funding would help schools finance emergency operation plans, counseling, and behavioral health programs. There are no requirements for firearms, the department said. Uh, A $1 billion federal grant program uh, that school districts looked to tap last year for firearms would be eliminated. Had strike while the iron was hot. Uh, A few domestic spending programs would also see increases. If Mr. Trump's budget were passed as is, uh, those include efforts to reduce opioid addiction, which, believe me, needs to be funded. We've had that story on here a couple of times before, um, as well as a 10 percent increase in health care spending for veterans. Uh, that also needs to happen. Uh, President Trump will also propose a new voucher program for education, 200 billion in infrastructure spending and efforts to reduce the cost of prescription drugs. Uh, Again, this budget would not balance for 15 years, uh, breaking what what some are saying a a campaign promise uh, to pay off the entire national debt within eight years. I don't remember that being a promise made, but I'll have to look into that. this is a fairly reputable source that I used for, for that. So um, I'm, I'm going to take them at their word for right now until I can find otherwise. Uh, the president's first proposed budget, balancing revenue and, sp- uh, balancing revenue and spending in 10 years, uh, the budget released on Monday forecast trillion-dollar deficits uh, for four straight years starting in 2019. Uh, Those are largely the result of the tax cut, uh, which has been financed through increased government borrowing, which I don't like the sound of. Uh, Budget details released by the White House uh, highlight several areas of conflict between Democrats and President Trump, starting with immigration enforcement, along with renewing the wall funding fight that led to a record government shutdown late last year. president is asking for more personnel at immigration and customs enforcement and for a policy change meant to end so-called sanctuary cities, which do not hand over undocumented immigrants to federal officials when they are arrested in local crimes. Uh, This budget is a recipe for American decline, said Representative John Yarmuth, a Democrat of Kentucky. Uh, and the chairman of the House Budget Committee, it's laughable that this budget is subtitled Promises Kept, because in fact there are a lot of promises that have been violated in this budget, he said. Um, he say, he went on to say that this is a budget that they will not take seriously when they are working on their budget plan and, and spending priorities for 2020. 
Now, disapproval from the Democratic presidential candidates was just as blunt. Uh, this is a budget for the military industrial complex, for corporate CEOs, Wall Street, and the billionaire class, uh, said Bernie Sanders. And he ought to know with his posh three houses. Uh, he, he lives the good life. This is a guy that's never had a real job. So, you know, he knows all about that. Uh, even some prominent Republicans greeted the president's request somewhat coolly because it did not go far enough to reduce the growing national debt. I understand that problem. I don't like it either. Uh, Representative Steve Womack, a Republican of Arkansas, and the ranking member on the budget committee noted uh, that by cutting only mandatory spending, could the federal government seriously reduce deficits and debt? Uh, President Trump's budget takes steps in the right direction, but there is still much work to do, Mr. Womack said in a statement. Administration officials uh, fanned out to defend the budget. Russ Vaught, the acting director of uh, the Office of Management and Budget, blamed Democrats in Congress for the ballooning deficit. Even though the Democrats have not controlled Congress for years, uh, we do have large deficits. That's why we are here transparently saying that we have a problem as a country. It takes a long time to get out of that mess. Well, he's right. It does take a long time. And the longer we keep kicking the can down the road, the longer it's going to take to get it done. So I want to see somebody step up and make some real efforts on this crap. Now, that's enough budget talk for tonight. We've spent more than enough time on that. Um, let's get to some, some more fun stuff. Let's get to impeachment or no impeachment talks as it seems to be, uh, all of a sudden Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff are saying, no, we don't really want to impeach him because it's divisive to the country. And Pelosi said, he's just not worth it. Now, <laughs> you know, here. There was a, a Q and A with uh, with the Washington Post uh, with um, Joe Heim, uh, and and he said, "I'm going to give you some news right now because I haven't said this to any press person before." Uh, well, this is Pelosi talking. She said, "I haven't said this to any press person before. I'm not for impeachment," she said. But since you asked, and I've been thinking about this. Impeachment is so divisive to the country that unless there's something so compelling and overwhelming and bipartisan, I don't think we should go down that path because it divides the country. And he is just not worth it. Now, see, this was another theme this week. Um, Pelosi with he's not worth it. Uh, uh, when... Uh, when one of the other, uh, we'll call the, the bad girls click in Congress, uh, Ilhan Omar, uh, she was asked because she made a comparison. Well, she actually said that Obama was a murderer with, with just a baby face and, you know, really was no different than Trump. And when a reporter actually held her to that statement, her comment was, and, and this is, I'll paraphrase it for the most part. Well, actually, I'll quote it for the most part, but it might be slightly paraphrased. How about that? She said, are you kidding? Of course, comparing them is not even right. One of them is human and the other is not. So she's referred to the president as being not human. So uh, he's not worth it. He's not human. This is all in line with, you know, their new attitude. But uh, look, make no mistake, um, Pelosi is kind of on the warpath right now. And she may be doing this just to put people in her own party in line. Uh, you know, you can think what you want. You know, they, they may not ever openly come out and criticize one another, but Nancy Pelosi took a beating on this, uh, this condemnation of hate that they passed out of the house. She took a beating on that from this new young clique that would not have Omar singled out for condemnation. So, um, 
besides being the first time she's taking impeachment off the table, she previously said it was premature to consider it. Uh, her assertion comes as special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation uh, appears to be drawing to a close. Now, look, and, and this feeds into my theory of it. They're already being briefed that Mueller has nothing on Trump. So they're trying to set this up like, well, it really didn't matter what he found because we had already said we were taking impeachment off the table anyway. So um, Pelosi said that uh, she told the Post, the Washington Post, that Trump has been a great organizer for Democrats, a great fundraiser and a great mobilizer at the grassroots level for Democrats. And I think that's good for America, she said. So never mind anybody that's on the right. That's not good for America. Only the left is good for America. Uh, she added, I don't think he's fit to be president of the United States. Again, we're going back to this. So, it, you know, again, it, it, it's just crazy. Um, and, and Pelosi continued, she said, and it's up to us to make the contrast to show that this president, while me, he may be appealing to you on your insecurity and therefore your xenophobia, whether it's your globalization or immigrants, it's fight, it is fighting clean air for your children to breathe, clean water for them to drink, food safety, every good thing we uh, should be doing that people can't do for themselves. Now look, Look, this is ridiculous. The, to insinuate that people on the right don't care about the environment, don't care about children, don't care about food, water, or helping others. Well, we already know study after study has been done that show that conservative-minded folks are much more philanthropic than uh, you know, liberal leaning folks. That's just how it is. Study after study confirms it. So, um, uh, you know, Pelosi, she wrapped up her little press conference and she said, all the challenges we have faced, we can withstand anything, Pelosi said, except for maybe two terms of Donald Trump. So we have to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, she's just being her. That's all it is. Now, more in line uh, to the other side of the aisle, but away from home, in an interview for a book published last week, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban stressed that Hungary has been part of Europe for 1,000 years and that its critics in the European Union are upset because Hungary's constitution states that the country has, quote, Christian roots that rejects multiculturalism, that every child has a right to a mother and a father, and that the country has a right to defend its borders, especially against the threat of Islam. Oh, they're furious with him. So um, this book, uh, it's called I Pulled the Thread of Lies and Everything Unraveled. Uh, it's written by uh, a former Secretary of State for Culture in France. Uh, that would be uh, Philippe de Villiers. Uh, you, can, you can look that up. It's I Pulled the Thread of Lies and Everything Unraveled. Uh, in a chapter about Budapest, Villiers discusses a conversation he had with Prime Minister Orban uh, concerning criticism from the EU headquarters in Brussels, uh, Orban said, I'm not concerned about the Brussels trials. My grandmother taught me to be humble in adversity. I must put up with all of this. I can do nothing but place myself in God's hands. What outrages our opponents the most, he said, is the fact that in our constitution, we have written that Hungary has Christian roots, uh, that here... Uh, there is no place for multiculturalism, and a child has the right to a mother and a father, and that our nation has the right to defend its borders. 
the prime minister expressed concern about the divisive nature of Islamization uh, in certain EU countries. If they leave us alone and do not force uh, Islam upon us, Europe can live on as a club of free nations. If, however, they force us to accept the UN's migration compact or the decisions of the European Commission, thereby aligning us with their permissive Western policy, disintegration cannot be ruled out. For us, the accusation that we are not fully European is a cruel joke, uh, when after half a century of Soviet occupation and communist oppression, we finally regained our freedom. When the West opened its arms to embrace us, we thought we had returned to our kind of Europe. After all, Hungary has belonged to Europe for a thousand years. We have always remained European, even when we were sold down the river at Yalta or let down in 1956, he said. After the withdrawal of the Soviets, we believed we could regain our place in Europe in this family of free nations resting on the pillars of Christian culture, national identity, and human dignity. Not even in our worst nightmares did we think 29 years after our enchained nations gained freedom and the continent reunited, Europe would be vulnerable to imperial ambitions, those which this time do not originate outside its borders but within them. Now, Hungary's not alone in this, folks. I, I'll tell you that right now, because Poland uh, is very obstinate about having their borders enforced as well. And they have valid points. If you look at the crime rates in countries that have taken in uh, is Islamic immigrants, you know, like open the floodgates, you can see the crime has skyrocketed and their crime has remained almost non-existent. Uh, yeah, he, the man has a valid point and just like Trump has a valid point with this, how can you say there's no security risk at the border if you don't know who's crossing? And it's that simple. You can't have open borders because you have to know who's coming across. Otherwise, you're just inviting terrorists into the country. And don't think that hasn't happened. They already know there have been some terrorists arrested at the border. I guarantee you for every one that was arrested, at least three or four made it through. But your politicians, your elected representatives are allowing this to happen. I don't care what side of the aisle they're on because nobody's doing anything about it. Uh, we're not going to get into anything else. We're just not going to have time. But, um, well, no, we don't have time. We don't have time. We'll just, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, again, coming up next in, the, in just a few minutes, uh, FUBAR with Politibunny and Ordy Packard followed by Robinson and Wright with Rick and Dan, and then America Off the Rails with Rowdy Rick. Uh, let's see, what Wednesday is this, Rick? Uh, we, have, we have two more weeks. Okay, so I will be back with you next week, and then we'll have Toxic Masculinity on the 27th. Mark your calendar for that. And uh, let's see, I guess that's uh, about it. Uh, so I'll tell you, as I do every week, uh, if you like the show, tell your friends. If your friends like the show, you need new ones, but they and you are welcome here with me every week on the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show. We're kind of cutting out there for a second. Try that again. That's okay. Just go ahead and run it. We're good. All right. Nothing works here. Medications don't work. I've been here for seven years.